guys, I'm John. I'm Sharif. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right. Every week, every Sunday, 11 a.m., me and my beautiful wife over here are bringing you guys new tips, tricks, and ways to excite, ignite, and hopefully take your relationship to a whole new healthy, positive level. And hopefully extend the longevity of that relationship. And don't worry for you people out there, you guys and girls that aren't in a relationship, just store all these away, put them as mental notes, so you guys can utilize these tips and tricks to help you in your future relationship. And hopefully that will be a long lasting, positive, healthy relationship. So let's just get into it. So this week we're gonna talk about something that every relationship should have. And not everybody looks forward to these things, right? So let's talk about having a disagreement or an argument. This is something that is very common and is necessary for a healthy relationship. This shows that you have your own opinion or you wanna talk about something or you feel a certain way about something that your partner may not feel the exact same way about. Mm -hmm. Or you guys might disagree on something that you guys wanna get. Or yeah, buy. You need to agree to disagree. Or take okay. in, whatever yeah. it may be. You guys are making decisions, and now you have a partner to make that decision with. So you guys got to, you guys are going to have to agree on these decisions about what they are. And if you're just starting a relationship, these might be minor things like, hey, where are we going to go on our date? Are you going to spend the night at my house? Or are you going to spend the night at your house? Mm -hmm. Some of these little things, right? And then as you get into your relationship and you start really, really committing to that person, new things start happening. And this might cause disagreements, arguments, or even fights down the road. Now, like I said, it's healthy. Everybody should have an argument or it's disagreement in a relationship. It's not even should. You will. You will. <laughs> you will. Unless you have a really submissive partner that just takes everything. Even the submissive people, I think, still. You think so? Yeah, I do. I think at some point, even in their submissiveness, they might still go along with it. But they might have that one point where they're like, well, you know. And they might, they're not going to, maybe not aggressive, you know, like me or whatever, you know, I'm like, eh, you know, um, but maybe they might just be like, well, and then that might be the cue where the other partner is like, okay, let me be fair here. Mm -hmm. Like that's where you're supposed to jump in and be the fair person mm -hmm. instead of just always being the decision maker and being the person making all decisions all the time. True. Uh, like I said, Different people, different things. True. And the different relationships, different ways that they abide by these different things. So it really depends on how your relationship is structured, right? Now, if you guys are both alphas, you guys might butt heads even more than the regular person that has a submissive partner because you guys are both in the driver's seat or trying to be, and both people want their foot on the pedal. But I really like driving a lot, like a lot. You know, you're going to have to establish, <laughs> you know, the dominance level, who's the alpha, and who's the beta in the relationship. It just is what it is. It's true. You can't have two alphas. Right. It just does not work like that. Now, they can be the alpha in their own sense, Yeah, right? I'm the alpha in my own. He's talking right. about me in front of me right yes. now. Yes, yes. talking about our relationship. <laughs> He's literally talking about us in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you told funny. him, not me. Don't really do that. <laughs> he, he might as well say it, right? Because that is us, right? Because he's like, talking about it like as if it was like a, like a thing he read online. But this is like, this is happening. It's active. <laughs> it's just a prime example that I want to give you guys. I mean, It's funny, no, because really, though, I mean, I am an alpha female, right? I have always been an alpha female. I, I, I like, I make the calls. I do drive. I've always driven, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I meet an alpha male and I needed, okay, and you guys gotta, you guys should really think about this actually. So I needed an alpha male in my life to balance me because if I had a beta, even though you would think an alpha and a beta go together, sometimes an alpha needs another alpha to have a balance instead of having a beta because mm -hmm. then you may not, you might tip over sideways and you might not, it just may not work out that well. But it took many years to establish, okay, well, all right, I'll be the beta when I'm with you, but outside of this relationship, I'm the alpha. Like, you know, with our staff or with my friends or whatever it might be. So we've established that, but it, that did not happen overnight. No. And that took many, many years. I mean, even to this day, there might be a situation that happens that we're butting heads like that just because of our personalities and we're both, we're both so much alike yet so different yeah. in many aspects, but we are alike in a lot of ways. Yeah. And sometimes being alike, you don't always agree 
because you are alike. It's true. So, you know, it's, it's, true. it's, it's you, there, you can't have the two alphas. It doesn't work that way. And that's if you're dating a girl, a guy, girl, girl, guy, guy, whatever it is out there, you know, it's, it's irrelevant. Somebody's going to have to step down. Now, with that being said, whether you're an alpha or beta, let's remove alpha and beta names, right? Here's person A, person B. You guys are going to have to come to some sort of agreement, right? You can't always be like, okay, I'm the alpha. We're doing what the alpha says. It doesn't work like that. You guys have to come to like a 50-50 agreement, okay? Sometimes you'll agree to disagree. Sometimes one person will be like, okay, fine, we'll go with that. Or the next person, okay, fine, we'll go with that. But you guys have to meet each other at a halfway point. There is a halfway point you have to meet each other at. It's fair, being fair. I don't know if anybody has to reach out to a middle point, but it would probably be a good idea. Some people will never do that. Some people will never give in. And you will find a downfall in your relationships if you do do that. Mm. So you might have to rethink some of the different ways that you've been before in the past. And that's harder as we get older because we're so set in our ways. Mm -hmm. You know, prime example is my dad. Oh, my gosh. I mean, dude, he's like, you know, sitting there. He's like, I don't want to even be with another woman because, you know, I like things my way. And they're going to try to change me and do that. Like, all right, well, listen, you know, if you, if you want companionship, you want a partner, um, you know, you got you got to have some sort of, you know, opening and balance to a certain extent. You don't want them to change you who you are either. But, you know, big shout out to my dad. Yeah, you know, shout out. Hope you're watching. So, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just is what it is, right? Yeah, it is what it is. But, you know, I mean, going back to our point here. Um, we were talking about the 555. Five, listen, five. hold on. I'm getting into that. I'm oh, fine. So the big thing about yeah, this, and we, we talk about every time, is communication. And that's the only way you're going to get past these disagreements and arguments and fights. And you want to talk civilly, right? It's not screaming at each other aggressively, you know, because that, that doesn't do anything. One person screams, the other person screams louder, the other person screams louder than that, and then you guys are getting more aggressive down the road. Mm. Start being calm when you talk, right? You can feel a certain way or very passionate about it, and you can express that without being super aggressive. And it might be hard for some of you guys out there, so that's where self-control really comes into play. Now, let's talk about, because we're about the five-minute warning, let's talk about the 555 method. With the five-minute warning. And we've never, we've never had, <laughs> you know, we've never used this method per se on no, ourselves, right? No, we haven't. But I'm always looking for new tools to help couples out there really get over some of the humps or problems that they're going through. You know, I've already went through my humps or my, you know, my roadblocks, you know, to get by there and make sure that everything is working in my, uh, in my little track, but you guys got to make sure that your track is cleared. So when I talk about this, we talk about communication, right? But the 555 method is probably going to be one of your best bets to be able to utilize as a couple. So you haven't heard of this? Let's talk about it. I haven't. So three oh, fives, no. right? They all stand for something. The first five, right? The first two, I guess. The first two are going to be five minutes each for each partner. And in those five minutes, you cannot interrupt your partner. You have to listen to them. And you got to make eye contact and be fully involved with what they're saying for five minutes after that five minutes is done then your partner gets their five minutes and they get to talk without you talking to them and you listening to them with eye contact and full involvement the last five minutes is going to be you guys talking it out together now you've heard each other's points in the five minutes so really think about those five points. Get your points together if you're going to do the five, 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 because you only have five minutes. Well, I mean, five minutes is a long time to talk. I mean, you know, if, if it's a, a huge one problem thing, I think you just being straightforward and communicating what that problem is or what made you upset uh, or what you didn't like or what the boundary is. I think you can get that point across in five minutes without just going to suit and just keep coming back and back and just you know repeating things over and over. Be direct. Say what the problem is. Say what you don't like. Say what the boundary is. And then let your partner talk. And then let them talk and really hear them out. Really what they're saying. Put yourself in their shoes and think about, would you like that if your partner was doing that to you? And if you say yes, then at that point, tell them. Say, listen, I would expect the exact same to happen to me if I was in your shoes. But if you don't agree, then you got to say, listen, I do see it from your side. And even if you don't agree with them, you need to see their perspective. Yeah, 100%. You need to at least All empathize right? somewhere. In because there. even if you don't see it, that's fine. People see things in different ways. So you have to really understand them and say, listen, I agree with your perspective, but I have a different perspective on this. 
and then you guys will move on. Hopefully that communication in the last five minutes will get you over the hump or get you past a problem or argument or whatever it may be. And the biggest thing you have to do at the end of this is find a resolution. Yeah. Don't let it keep going on. Well, yeah, because you, you can complain about it all day long, but what's going to be, how are we going to fix it? Yeah. Right? You know, as me and John have gotten older over the years and busier, we've become, uh, I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've become a little bit more direct and a little bit more like, okay, if this is the problem, what is it to fix it? Right. All right, what are we going to do to fix it? Okay, cool, let's fix it and move on. Right. It's one of those kind of things because we have no time. Yeah. I, I mean, I, don't, I have no time at all. So I don't have time. So it's got to be direct. It's got to be here. This is how we're going to do it, fix it, whatever. So in that five minutes, the very last five minutes of your five, 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 rule um you guys need to come to some sort of resolution on how you're going to fix the issue or maybe even like maybe bullet point some things that you guys can do to help get to the resolution because yep. it may not be fixed overnight right it so, might not be no there's things that may not that might take time to fix you know and it takes time to go through it and you gotta it, it's just time you can't make time go faster but it does sometimes it takes time. nice specific goals that you guys may want to achieve together or what you want to achieve going forward what's made you guys upset what's made you guys fight and um try to resolve that try to get it out of the way because if you just don't talk about it Festering. it just festers and starts building up Festering this can cause good. negativity throughout the relationship um it can cause you to really not like your partner right and say like i don't even want to be around you and literally not want to be around them um and that can be the downfall of your relationship. And if this is something that you really love, you probably should take the time to listen, understand, and hopefully try to find some resolution and make them happy and make you happy in the same light. Just know that like, you know, being silent and giving the silent treatment because I, I used to do this and it doesn't work and like slamming things and like, you know, you know, pushing drawers in really loud and like slamming down your cup and stuff. Obviously they know you're mad and like y'all have to talk about it at this point because if not, it's just, you're just slamming things at that point. He knows that I'm mad. And it's like, okay, what's your problem? Like, what, what, just tell me what your problem is. Right. You know, so just get it out of the way. <laughs> it takes less time. So guys, I hope you, you guys will like this tip and trick that we're talking about today. Use the 555 method, right? All right, so we'll be back every Sunday, 11 a.m. ABC. If you guys can't watch us live, make sure to DVR us. And like I said, if you missed that, just go over to YouTube. Hit Insight Medical Center, hit the subscribe button, all notification bell, and you'll get to see me and this pretty little lady over here.